Hello, Roly. Hey, Bond. <laughs> What's up? Well, <laughs> not much. I mean, it's quite a big deal that we're here. We're here in Wuj, at Sound Edit, Producers Festival, which apparently we're like the only people here. I mean, there's a camera crew and... <laughs> Uh, yeah, but these are the times, huh? Yeah, just the virus and us. <laughs> yeah. So we came here because uh, I think it's about time that you uh, that you get uh, recognized also for the wider audience because not so many people actually from the mainstream knows your work and I think that they should definitely uh, have a look at it, you know. So we're here celebrating uh, the Man with a Golden Ear recognition by Sound Edit Festival. Uh, and I'd like you, like, you know, I don't want to ask you stupid questions because I, I, know, don't. <laughs> I know you don't like them and you're probably going to hate all the questions mm. I'm going to ask you. Uh, so Sorry. maybe you have an answer without a question, you know? No, just, just uh, ask. Okay. Say. Okay, so I have to kill you or not? I have this question that I always ask myself. You know, when you hear a good good song, mm -hmm. uh, when do you have like this moment where you can switch off, like listening and checking out if it's done right? You know, if you like the frequency work, if you like the you know the mix, basically, and you just simply enjoy it. You know. Well, it's, uh, I, I don't separate all these things that much, you know. I, 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 uh, I basically work on it till I, till I don't know what to do anymore, you know. No, there's nothing to, no, nothing to be done anymore. Then I let, I let it rest, and maybe listen a couple of days later. Uh, then maybe I find little details, but all my mixes I could mix forever if, if I wanted to, you know. They never really finished it, but at one point you just have to let it go, you know. So, so it's, I've never, I haven't made the perfect mix yet, so I have to, I'm still working on it. I actually, <laughs> I, I know what you mean, because I observed you many times, mm -hmm. we work in the studio together, and, and I, I could uh, always see you, you know, in these phases, you know, of mixing but I was more asking, like, when you just listen to a song, I'm not talking about the, the stuff you produce, mm -hmm. but you, you just, you know, you have something uh, that you enjoy, you know? Do you kind of put it in pieces? You, you, you no, analyze no, it? No, or? no, no. I mean, I, I, listen, I listen just, uh, you know, I listen to the song, and uh, if the song touches me somehow, I follow it, you know? And there's different, uh, there are different uh, ways of consuming music nowadays, you know? So when it's all over the place, so... 99% I, I cannot stand, but uh, but uh, if it, I, I'm not dissecting it work-wise, and like, oh, how to the they're losing the order, oh, they're doing this, doing this, and from the, I don't, uh, because the song has to talk to you, and, and if you if you hear the if you hear the the work behind it, the actual work, then there's some there's some when something went wrong, you know, it's like. It's like if you you hear you hear the words but not the message. It's like the, the message. The words are very important, and, and uh, putting the right words together is absolutely important. But it's absolutely not important if you compare it with the message. You know, so that's the message has to. If it covers up the message, it, there's a lot of very good productions. They're flashy. But it covers up the songs, you know. It's like it's it's distracting. Yeah, it's distracting from the from the message, you know. Yeah, I think that there are a lot of people that have a lot to say, you know. But in, eventually, you don't really listen to them because it's it's just uh, annoying and boring, and it's not uh, mm -hmm. and it's not uh, important what they what they say actually, even though they might be fluent. And uh, I also want to. Uh, ask you about your like those two sides you have you know because you're 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 an amazing uh, live sound engineer and I have to say I've been at your show so many times and we work together you know it's an eclectic session uh, and many many bands also like we're doing a live work and I'm always blown away you know how how you make the drum sound and how you make the mix and how it's 
even in the difficult environment, you know, like a big hall with a huge reverb that, you know, it's, it might be difficult to get the right sound, you always manage to, you know, to make it right. So I know that's a skill, you know, that's something you, you, you have, you know, you're born with, for sure. It takes, it, it took probably a lot of time to, you know, to develop it, but how does it correspond to your studio work, you know? Are you using well, your skills as a live sound engineer in the studio? Yeah, I, th I think, I think my studio work was first and then the live sound came afterwards by understanding in the studio you have time to really sort out and learn all those those details and equalizing and compression, what you can do and what you shouldn't do, you learn. And then uh, I started doing the live stuff much later, like uh, about 20 years ago, I started doing this with Shosho, this live stuff, I started uh, developing it. And I kind of felt, I felt great because it's, uh, it's, it's fast and instant. The moment you hear it, you have to do it because that's, otherwise the moment is gone, you know? And so, so you, 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 you I, I discovered myself that my hand was faster than my thinking, okay, or my ears. My hand was before was on the right, on the mixing desk, on the right spot. Before I, before I actually make a decision, so you, you it's like a, uh, an instrument. So, so the, the the mixing desk got to be an instrument, <coughs> so which is connected. The hands are connected to to the sound. You know, and and you're just a medium, and I've just got fast, and I hear, I can hear when I hear something, boom! I don't have to think; it goes there. My hand goes there and does what it has needs to be done, and uh, most of the time it works. You know, it's uh, it's very fast. You know, so you have to be very fast, and and it's the same thing again. You have to be unintrusive, and uh, and uh, and life. You have to kind of. You know, put these things back together. This, this, all this. You have thirty microphones, and they all record something. So, so you have to, you have to. Uh, it's like a puzzle. You have to put back together. So it, it, uh, it, it uh, keeps the musical message. You know. Yeah, I, I remember when I first saw this little video from Prohibited Beats uh, party in New York that you set up with uh, with Jojo Mayer. Mm -hmm. And all, all guys, you know, from New York, like creative scene, and there was a, you know, when we saw it here, I mean, with my guys from mm -hmm. back then with Milupa, I remember the drummer, Michael, uh, he showed me when he came back from New York, yeah, he was at the Drummers Collective, and he was going every now and then, you know, to see Jojo and Prohibited Beats. Yeah, it was every week. We had yeah, and he, and he saw me this, 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 this first promo uh, that mm -hmm. was done, and I remember, it was. It's actually what you've been talking just now, that you on that video you react to the sounds like you know like uh, very spontaneously. It's very intuitive, mm -hmm. and but you know you, what you're doing. You could definitely tell. You know that this is not like this guy is 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 uh, you know reacting to those sounds and reversing like the engineering work. You know. So this this approach, I think. Is still being developed, and you're one of the pioneers of. Yeah, of yeah this. no, it's uh, it's it's definitely definitely uh, it's an instrument, you know, mixing uh, this kind of mixing style. It's 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 uh, it's an instrument itself. But I always say the the first instrument. If if we come in this room now with the band, the first instrument is the room, because <laughs> everything will sound in this room. This room will colorize everything and dominate. It will dominate. The sound, okay. So that's that's the dominating instrument. Now you have to, you have to make a peace peace with this room, you know, yeah. and uh, figure out the the, the 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 positives and bring them out and and uh, maybe overpower the negatives, if possible, and uh, and and then so and and then so so you play an instrument before even somebody has to play the first the first hit. So, so, uh, and it has to do with you know, where you place the PA, how you equip the PA, uh, uh, where you set up the band, how loud they play the monitors, you know. Uh, there's so many factors, and you can never control all these factors, so it's like always a, it's always a compromise. And, 
my experience is when the soundtrack is really fucking bad, then we have a good show, you know. So, <laughs> you know, my rule is that whenever we do a sound check and the sound check is fucked, you know, then we have a good show. Yeah, yeah, no, this. Uh, and I'm always like really, I feel really, uh, I don't really feel safe whenever sound check goes good, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's it's a true. sign of a bad show. Yeah, no, that's why I mean, and everything's good. That's why I stop sound check immediately when everything sounds. We don't have to waste. Uh, the good energy, you know. Yeah. yeah, it is also all about the expectations, yeah. I guess. Yeah. But I also want to like go back a little bit to your like early days, you know, because you like you were born in 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 Switzerland, yeah, near Zurich, and and but you most of your life you actually spent in New York, mm -hmm. which was, I mean, in the yeah, 70s, sorry, 80s, so years. was it? How was the scene there? Well, it's, <laughs> it's, I mean, it's look at the planet now. If you look at the planet. I guess anywhere, 1978 and uh, and 1970 in Poland, what well, went down here? I mean, it's a complete different planet, you know, yeah. and uh, and the same thing in New York, you know. It's like it's like uh, it's like I guess people always try to arrange with the system they live in and and then relatively EQ it so it works, you know. So, 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 and that's, you only realize the differences if you travel, you know. Yeah. So, and, and now, I mean, it's like somebody which is born now and, uh, or born, let's say, 20 years ago and he goes to New York, it has a complete different experience than I had when I went to New York in 1978, you know. Because there was, I mean, it was culturally, it was, uh, it was rent was cheap, I had a loft. Uh, 3,000 square feet loft for $250, you know, in Tribeca, which is now, the, now uh, I think they just sold, somebody sold this loft for, for, I don't know, $4 million or something, which is completely ridiculous. I mean, it's, it's uh, you see the... Because you also, you, I remember when you were telling me your work with the Young Gods, because mm -hmm. uh, you produced most of their albums, I think if not all, mm -hmm. uh, so I remember you telling me when you uh, you were working on the like getting the you know crazy sounds and you would go to the tube you know record the uh, uh yeah yeah it's it's uh, that actually that in one of the on 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 uh, only heaven there's a, there's this really whistling high sound which is actually all of him is a Walkman uh, in in the subway recorded the subway. The, the trains like going around the corner, screeching and squealing, and he slowed it down like four octaves, you know. And that was the composition, you know. So obviously, you yeah. worked a lot of with tapes, you know, and you and actually that's became. The, yeah, the first the first record of Young Gods was uh, was the, this electro harmonic sample you have with the sample, with, uh, with four seconds, like an eight bit cheap, cheap sample, and we had the sounds on cassette. So every time a song with a new sound, you had to play it from the cassette and resample it. That was the setup, you know. So it's the, it's a, it was completely analog. Uh, the, all the sounds on the first record are, are kind of coming from analog over a cassette tape, you know. And then I used the studio to beef it up and uh, make it sound, make it sound different. But uh, it's also the same thing when you say the times, the times. Now, if if you get into music now and you want a sample, you you buy a sample, and sample has hours of sampling time. You know, and the highest quality you want, okay, or, or the lowest you want, but there's no limitations, okay. <laughs> we had like uh, we had, after the the electro, we had this archives, the S nine hundreds. This one had had two seconds. You could sample two seconds, and uh, this was the maximum you could sample. So so the the longest, uh, the longest uh, sound was two seconds. Okay, so we, what we did, uh, what we did, I, I mean, they came up with the title "Minimal Bootleg Architecture," you know, mm -hmm. we, uh, because of the because of the short, and that was limitation, which actually made Young God's work. You know, yeah. I don't think you would come up with the same thing. Maybe you could sample long or so. I think you know these days, like, actually, limitations also for me. You know, I'm 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 looking at it, you know, because I like, like you mentioned, this electro harmonic sampler, mm -hmm. which you know, when you think about the sampler, most of the guys that would use a the sampler, they would say like, oh, this is useless, you know, because you cannot really 
uh, align it in any way, you know. But for me, this unpredictableness of this thing is is absolutely absolutely the biggest uh, benefit, you know. And I, I just I simply love it because I never know what's gonna what's gonna yeah, what's gonna come out, you know. Um, of course, uh, you know you you manage to to learn some some devices, but still there's this thing that you can get surprised with. Yeah, no, I remember I when. We had in the studio when I did production in the 80s, I always had a, a, dot, a digital audio tape, a cassette format, which was very high quality digital first, digital, affordable digital format. And I had always the assistant at all times, I want to, what's going on in the studio, I want to be in record at all times. Because a lot of times these machines went completely bonkers, you know, you, you press the wrong button and then the whole, whole system goes bonkers or you load the wrong sounds and it plays. And it just made it made absolute sounds which which I had and, I, and then I kept those those I copied those sounds out and I used these snippets of those sounds and then when when somebody asked me how did you make this sound well it was very complicated I cannot tell you you know <laughs> yeah I mean there are so much uh, so much sound still to discover I guess huh? I mean it never ends and this is. Well, it's the thing is this, it's like it's, you play music, you don't work music, you know, you play, you play. The thing is I'm playing, you know, so you, you play with it, it's like, like ch children play, they don't work, you know. The, you play an instrument, you don't work an instrument, I mean, but you have to work very hard so you can play good. <laughs> yeah. And how, how, because you're, like, maybe some people know that you're also amazing, uh, Percussionist, actually, and a drummer. You know, you, you, you used to be uh, like the in the early days of of uh, Swans. Yeah, you've been a member of the band, and uh, but you've been also playing. Just recently, we we had great jams, and we developed this eclectic room mm -hmm. concept where we invite musicians for improvisations, and it's it's very broad style-wise. There are no boundaries. And you also, of course, you mix the sessions and we, res we mm -hmm. release it online. But you also, I bring you in sometimes because I know how much you enjoy playing um, uh, percussion, and yeah. especially bongos. And, mm -hmm. uh, and you're amazing in this Latino world. So how, how does, where does it come well, from? Well, that's, that's, that's long bit when I still was growing up in Switzerland, one of the first bands, we had this funk band. I tried to uh, play funk music, like Parliament and so on. And then that kind of broke up. And then the percussion player and me, we, we discovered Cal Jade. That's like a vibraphone a player who plays Latin jazz. Like this, 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 instead of a drummer, he had a timbales player, a con and bongo player. And so on. oh, that sounds great. So we, we learned all those rhythms, you know. We had to, and at that point, there was no uh, YouTube. You had to actually listen to the record. And so what could the bongo do now? So you listen, you have to just learn by listening. So we listened to the things and I found a piano player who could play. And then we started playing this Latin music. And I, I, and I was, I, was uh, I liked those rhythms because the system behind is absolute genius. This Afro-Cuban uh, rhythm system with the clave and how it all works together. And uh, <clears throat> I did that for, for a few years before I went to New York actually. Then in New York, I, I, I went to see the less best Latin bands you can see in the world. And uh, but I, I was at that point I, I was uh, on on, a, on the on the drum set and did more this uh, Swan stuff and voice plot. So I wasn't that into that Latin. Uh. <laughs> but then I just came back, you know. Yeah. So it's always it's like I have a lot of. Uh, I also I, I studied on the drums. I studied a lot of jazz. Uh, and it's just like a vault. You have a you have a vault stored with information, and then at the right moment you can pull it out. And oh, isn't that uh, isn't that you know, that reminds you of that record, you know? And then you can kind of oh, then you have, you have you can develop some new ideas how you can treat modern things now, you know? Because uh, because uh, there's nothing new on the song. It's just a new combination. You put it together differently, but it's the source is the same, you know. Yeah, I don't want to ask you questions like how was how was it working with this guy or the other guy because we know that these questions are just so fucking stupid, you know that uh, there's a question there. <laughs> I think. Uh, 
<laughs> well, it was great. It was uh, it was always great. <laughs> it was always great working with everyone. Yeah, it was absolute fabulous, fabulous. But I want to I want I want to ask this question in a different way, you know, because uh, mm. for me you were all, always amazing because you know it, it it didn't mean like if the guy was you know famous or. He had, it was always about the music, you know? If, yeah, if the yeah, music yeah. was right, you could hear like there, there's something special about it and it touches you. It could be a, like a hillbilly band, you know, from around the corner from, from Pobiedna or mm -hmm. whatever. And we actually did, did some of that as well. Yeah. I mean, all yeah. kinds of projects. <coughs> so I want to ask you how, how, how it, about this approach, you know, when of course you have like big clients, like you used to have working with uh, Fate No More or, uh, you know, Mike Patton. But you all, how you approach, you know, a band that, that wants to work with you? I mean, they approach you, obviously. But yeah, how, but you, how, like, you, how you respond I mean, to that? I mean, I listen to, I listen to the material, if possible, if they have something and, uh, or, or entice them to make material so I can listen to. And, uh, and there's thousands of different ways if you to get it together or not, but obviously, we need some sort of budget to come and use the studio and uh, and uh, uh, and some technology. And uh, if I figure out the pass, if I hear something, you know, if I hear what it could be done, and uh, and then I, I try to find out what the band wants, you know, what do what do they want, to you know, how do they? Because it's uh, uh, for me, it's also important that uh, that uh, that I don't come in and just like okay, I know how to make a drum sound. Uh, I can make I can make I can record drums and then after it's by mixing I can I can make them make them sound like sixties, like eighties, like nineties. It's all it's it's it, that's easy, you know. So it's so it's easy. I can make a, a, an impressive, an impressive result. So that which sounds competent, but that might not be good for the band, you know. So so I have to always kind of see see. It might be more important to to actually. Be less, be, be less professional in the, old, in the classic sense. To be more uh, adventurous, try out different things, you know. So and then uh, and then in the end, with the mix, with the with the budget and the possibilities, and so yeah, all it, all it ends up somehow in the right in the right dimensions. So so you get the right result, you know. And then after it's, if it works, so you look like a genius. And uh, if it doesn't work, uh, nobody hears it. So. <laughs> And what do you think, like, what's going to happen in, in, I don't know, maybe that's also a stupid question, but I, I sometimes wonder myself, you know, what's going to happen in, like, I don't know, 20, 30, 50 years, you know, if, if we are still going to be, like, doing this stuff and this whole music business will be kind of, you know, in motion. What do you think, what, what it's going to be like? Because that, uh, you know, this analog culture, I mean, of course, there is a boost, in, in many areas, you know, and people get like into that stuff, but it's not a mainstream. It will never be like it used to be in the yeah. old days. Yeah, but uh, but this analog thing, I, I don't think it, it is more nostalgic uh, uh, thing. I, mean, I love analog technique. You know, but analog technique in the 80s and 90s. I I was working the, the top material, and it's a great sound, you know. But uh, but uh, nobody can afford this now anymore, you know, it's just like uh, <laughs> this, this, uh, it was on such a high level and uh, there was an industry behind it which used it and this, it, all this has disappeared completely, uh, there's not, it doesn't exist anymore, so you can find a few studios which have, uh, have all this equipment still and, and try to work it, but... Uh, but I mean, I'm, I'm even thinking more about like, uh, Keeping in mind that you know we have all this automatization coming along, you know, in all fields, you know. So even if if uh, there can be great music, you know, produced yeah, yeah, yeah. digital digital uh, environments, obviously. But what if there if there? My question is, what do you think? Like in 50 years, is there if is there gonna be good music around? Yes, I, I, I'm sure there will be good music around. And in what in what kind of uh, 
format it will be present itself. I don't know, but uh, but I assume it has to do with something which is still is playing live, you know, and and that's my assumption. Could be completely wrong. And I think in 50 years, a lot of the industrial music will be done by artificial intelligence. So they, these machines will compose the commercials for the for Coca-Cola and. They're gonna sound as good as the, whatever they have now, you know, and we'll have to function. So I think that we will all be done by uh, by algorithms, and uh, so the the survival, the, the the economical survival of the musician uh, is absolutely uh, uh, destroyed. You know, it's destroyed if you compare it to uh, to 20, 30, 40 years ago. It's absolutely uh, uh, like you know. 30 years ago, in 1990, you could make you could make a band. And in America, I said you could make a band and work hard, and then probably get a, a deal with with one of the record companies. They give you two hundred thousand dollars to make the first record, you know. And uh, and uh, they did that with like ten bands, you know. And then one of them maybe hit, and they pay back all this ten times, you know. This is all gone. This is all it doesn't exist anymore. It's just uh, I, I remember when I first when I met you. I also learned that you work with uh, with one one of my favorite bands back then and still, I guess, that the with mm. Matt Johnson and there are a lot of people that don't recognize the band. But you told me I know that you've been it's been on Epic, right? Mm -hmm. And you've been like flying around and paid for sessions and it was like completely different times. And that's, and that's, uh, I don't, I wouldn't like to end our little discussion that way, you know, let's keep it like, let's keep it uh, positive, I yeah, guess. Yeah, no, you know? I'm, 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 I'm just, you have to be, you have to be a real, real, if you want to be positive, you have to be realistic. That's positive, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. and figure out, I think the, the, I mean, it's also a story like you're going to see instrument companies, drum companies, people who make guitars. They're all going to have trouble in the future because, because, uh, because uh, playing instruments isn't that important anymore than it, as it used to be. You know, like uh, as and, and, and just prestigious. You know. Yeah. So we really hope to that you know we go back, get back on tours. And we wish that all the musicians and because what what's been happening since some weeks, months, you know, it's been uh, I mean, it's ridiculous. You know, this is what I think. And this is a big part of the of the human culture, you know, so let's hope that uh, the life side of music, which fuels actually the also the the, the studio. Uh, environments, you know, in a in a in a big way, you know, it goes back to kind of normal situation, you know. Uh, but but it, it's also if you see, the, like now in the fifties, you you went to the studio to record what you played live, and then with the Beatles, the studio came and came an instrument. You going to the studio to make your music, and then to try to figure out how to how to play it afterwards live. You know, you have to hire more musicians to this. And that was the 80s. Everybody made the fucking records in fantasy land and great records, you know. And then uh, to play live, three people uh, had problems, so you had to make compromises there. Now it's back again. <laughs> it's like it's like it's just like it goes all full circle, you know. It's like the like the like, like uh, now you have a lot of kids that just play live and record it, you know, and they do the record in yeah. in a concert and so. On. Anyway, yeah.